All right, everyone. Time at that time of the. I can't talk. It's that time of the week again. Yep, it's my vlog turn. Wednesday, hurrah, hurrah. So, before we break into the subject, and I see any of I will let you know that I have two guests in the room. One that you've already met is John Newman, my roommate. Well, I shouldn't actually give full names. Oh, well. Oh, well, it's, it's John Newman. How many are there? <laughs> Anywho, and the other one is Jamie, my ginger twin. Yep. Anywho, so you might hear them giggling in the background because they're going to be experiencing this, well, Newman the second time, Jamie the first time. Um, shut up, shut up. Anywho, okay. Brief news updates. Number one, I have been cast in NK's production of Anthony and Cleopatra, so yay. Um, classes are going very well. I'm involved in playwriting. I'm involved in acting too. I did a physical life sketch, which is, I think, turned out very well. I'm also in sociology, sociology, there. Uh, voice development for the actor and vocal techniques for the singing actor. Yes, I'm taking singing lessons. God help us all. Moving on. So, subject of the week are favorite albums and artists. I was the one that came up with this, and I've noticed that a lot of people have been playing a little fast and loose with it in terms of the numbering and whatnot. So, I think we'll get started on to my official top five albums, and from there you can figure out my artists. Uh, number five, Kanye West's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. I was not a fan of rap until the past two years or so, when I listened to Jay-Z's The Blueprint and then listened to Kanye West's The College Dropout and went through his entire dis discography. It's some really good stuff. I mean, I know a lot of you are more into musicals and classical and Celtic music, but just listen to it sometimes. The music behind it is really great and some of the wordplay is fantastic. I know a little bit can be childish, but you know what? It's good. Just trust me. Just some of the stuff on here, Runaway especially. Runaway is a beautiful track. So is Dark Fantasy and Gorgeous, All of the Light, and, mm, and the closing track, uh, Lost in the World and Who Will Survive in America, are both these beautifully composed numbers. So yeah, there's this one there. And remember, there's the little parental advisory warning. Ooh, ooh, scary. Moving on. Number four, I don't have a physical copy of it, uh, is Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band with The Innocent, The Wild, and The E Street Shuffle. The album right before Born to Run. You've got this very... It just feels like a summer album. You just listen to it and you're just bouncing on the boardwalk on Jersey. Well, granted, you guys probably... I'm not sure how many of you know exactly what that's like, but it's a really great and relaxing experience. You just almost feel sand between your toes. And it's... This great balladeer style. He's painting a lot of these words. He's painting these great pictures, especially uh, incident on 52nd Street and Wild Billy Circus Story. Wild Billy Circus Story isn't one of my favorites, but listening to it recently, just the way it's painted, you get a sense of this world and this carnival, as it were. Um, Okay, so that's Springsteen, which has a good place in my heart because my mom's a Jersey girl and I've listened to Springsteen for quite some time. Alright, moving on to number three, and again, this is a burnt copy, so you don't get an idea of the album artwork, but just to show you, Peter Gabriel's third self-titled album, which is more commonly known as Melt. Peter Gabriel is this artist that originally was with Genesis, um, band Phil Collins, uh, then came the the band leader of. Um, it started off as a prog rock band under he's in, under uh, Gabriel's influence and then became more of a pop band under Collins's. And he, Peter Gabriel's solo career has been very influenced by R&B and world, world music especially, especially Melt. There are so many playing with different sounds, these springs, these coils, these drums. It's you feel bits of Africana in there, bits of jazz, there's almost everything, and his voice is just, it's got this great range to it, it's got this nice deep bass chest voice all the way up to into this really great falsetto, not to Mercury, Freddie Mercury's extent, but Melt is definitely an album that 
has so many varying sounds and so many varying themes, and my computer went dark there for a second, and I got scared. Um, and here. So definitely check Melt out. Number two, uh, The Pogues, If I Should Fall From Grace With God. This album, this band, The Pogues is a Celtic punk band. They are the ones that started the whole trend back in the 1980s of, you know, mixing Celtic music of bagpipes and accordions and tin whistles all together and, ba and banjos all together with a very punk clash-like sound. They really hit it big with Rum Sodomy and The Lash, which I've got a little sticker of on my laptop. And they're giggling again. Good, good God, people. I'm trying to have a deep discussion about music here, and what... They're playing Little Big Planet, and they're having fun with pimples, apparently. Okay, anywho, so we're going to power through this. Um, but If I Should Fall From Grace of God is a sequel album to Rum Sodomy and the Lash, and Rum Sodomy and the Lash is a very sort of, you know, down there, very acoustic sounding, but... They've just let it rip on If I Should Fall From Grace of God, where it's, it's got a more produced sound, it's fuller, it's a wall of sound, and you've got this almost a little epicness to it. Uh, it's Shane McGowan who has some of the worst enunciation in music history, but he just it fits the music, and his lyrics are fantastic, especially for track number four, which is Fairy Tale of New York. Best anti-Christmas song ever. Just saying. Which reaches to my number one album pick, Elvis Costello's This Year's Model. Anyhow, this album changed the way I listen to music. It opens with such sound and fury, and unlike Macbeth, it does signify everything. This is a man, Costello's. Uh, favorite themes, as he's called itself, are revenge and regret. He talks about women he's lost and lo he's loved and lost. He's talked about censorship on radio, on fascism, on the fake people in life, and there's so much great wordplay in here. Just give a little squirt, give it love, a little squaddle, but there's no place here for the miniskirt wall. Capital punishment, she is the last year's model. They call her Natasha, but she looks like Elsie. I don't want to go to Chelsea. I just, saying those lyrics are fantastic enough. Just, um, from Radio Radio, they say you better listen to the voice of reason, but they don't give you any choice because they think that it's treat. So you better do as you're told. You better listen to the radio. Just fantastic. I almost did it. It's great. But this album, if you haven't listened to it yet, pick it up. It's got this great pop punk feeling to it. One of the best backing bands in the world, The Attractions. Bruce Thomas, Pete Thomas, and Steve Naive on bass, on drums, and on keyboard. Anywho, but once we're done with that, because I'm almost out of time, I'm going to give some uh, recommendations, other than my top five. Iggy Pop's Lust for Life, it's a fantastic pop album, some of it's improvised and it's produced by David Bowie, really. It's got the soundtrack Lust for Life and The Passenger on it. That's enough by itself. One I got from a friend, Weezer's Pinkerton. I really didn't like Weezer that much. I heard the Blue Album. I was like, eh. But Pinkerton, it's just such great guitar rock. Anywho, other things. If you haven't listened to it yet, here's more and for more, you Broadway lovers. It's Assassins. This is the new Broadway cast recording that came out back in 2004. It's so good. As much as I like the original off Broadway cast, this one here, it's just so much full, more full of life and. Just the orchestra is full because it's a bigger orchestra. Alright, other ones I don't have copies of, but I think you should listen to anyway. Uh, the Gaslight Anthems, American Slang, is a fantastic punk Springsteen-inspired Spring album. And one I just found out, there's this band called Sports from Ro Rochester, New York, with their self-titled album, Sports. 
I'll link it somehow in my in my little dialogue box below. Um, other things, other things. Um, ah. But anything, check out anything by Elvis Costello, really. Check out Blood and Chocolate. Check out King of America. Trust. Get happy. My aim is true. Armed Forces. It's all fantastic stuff, really. I'm not lying when I say that. Why would I? Anywho. So, that's my extremely long video. It's even longer than my Doctor Who video. Who would have guessed? Um, but I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to pass the torch on to the wonderful, the charming, the beautiful Katie. Be seeing you.